Conference and you can also call me Miss Tiana. Today I have with me the practitioner in charge. She is also the managing director for Hashem Dental and she is the one to help me with today's discussion. And today we are going to discuss on the topic oral health. So I don't want it to go anywhere. Stick and stay. Mrs. Lola Odo Temaklo, aka my boss. Mami, welcome to um, your oral health with Hashem Dental. Thank you so much. You are welcome. <laughs> Today I'm the one who's seeing you. Okay, so before we come to today's topic, um, you have been the managing director for Hashem Dental for how many years now? For three years. Three years. And what was the motivation behind this whole data? Because um, the company is Hashem Healthcare Services. So, what motivated you to venture into the dental um, as a dental operator, as a dental clinic? Yeah, so, like you rightly said, it's um, a healthcare service. We intend to give healthcare service all around. Okay, but. I am fortunate to be part of the dental profession. Okay. And then I came to realize that there was a lot of deficit in oral health knowledge and then um, patronizing of oral health services okay. almost everywhere in Ghana. So I decided to commence the journey of Hashem Healthcare Services with the oral health. That's great, and because of you, most of us are you know fulfilling our purpose. So we are grateful to have you, and to also have Hashem Dental. We are grateful to you. Okay, so today we are discussing on the topic oral health. I want to know what is oral health. Okay, oral health. Um, my definition is not going to be strictly what's in the books, but in my experience. Okay, or oh, I'm going to break it down to simple terms for everybody listening to us to be able to understand. Oral health is simply the health of your teeth and your gum your, and your face or the, what the orofacial complex, okay. the muscles of your face and your jaw. Yes. That's the health, the health of all these things. So your gum, your teeth, your teeth, your gum, your jaw, So, um, what is the effect of oral health on the general health? Okay. So, before I answer that question, I would first of all want us to look at the definition. The World Health Organization is the definition for health. Okay. It said um, health is the state of complete physical, uh, mental, and social well being of a person, okay. not merely the absence of. So, if you have physical well-being, you have mental well-being, social well-being, without disease, that is when you qualify to be a healthy person. So, a healthy person is not only uh, somebody who doesn't have good health, okay. who has an eye problem or a tooth problem, but a person who also have, has uh, what, mental challenges that's not fit for health. You have physical challenges like problem with your tooth or your face or your eye. You are not healthy. Mm -hmm. If you have a problem, the social well-being, you are able to relate to people, you are able to mingle with others. Okay. Then you can say that you are not healthy. So all these things come together to make somebody healthy. So our health deals with the teeth, the gum, the face. First of all, we have to know the importance of these things that we are 
information, then we can link it to uh, World Health Organization definition, definition of health. Okay, look at the function of the tea. The tea is there for, first of all, what you see for aesthetics. It's, help, it's there for nutrition because you don't have teeth, you can't eat very well, you can't derive the appropriate nutrients from your food, you are not able to chew well and grind your food. Okay, yes. yes. So if you have problem with your teeth, that it, it helps us to speak. There are some words that we speak the tongue and the teeth have to come together to pronounce the very well. That's why when you see people who have missing front or anterior teeth, yeah. when they're trying to say some words like S, you, you hear the sound there. Yeah. Because the tooth is not there for the tongue to attach to it. But now that was right. sound. Yeah. So socially too, you, the, you need the teeth to talk. You need the teeth to socialize. You need it for your health. As in uh, the eating good nutrition to get uh, good health. So if there's a problem with your tooth, you will not be fulfilling World Health Organization's definition of physical well-being because you have a problem with your tooth. Physical, that's physical. And mental well-being, you have lost your teeth. You are not able to smile. So you cannot like interact with people. And you'll be so depressed. You can't be in a relationship. You can't marry. Everybody wants to marry, have children, be in a relationship, accept everyone. Yeah. You will not be able to feel that portion of what the World Health Organization was talking about or uh, has spoken about in the definition of health. Yeah. So then you are not healthy. So without oral health, you will never have complete health. So we say that oral health has a relationship with the general health. If this is what the World Health Organization is saying or in this defining as health, then your oral health is also very important. And then we also say that your mouth is a gateway to the body. Yes. There is an interaction between your general health and your oral health. In that, there are some diseases that when they are in your body or when they come to your body, it is manifested in the mouth. Let's say you have uh, anemia, that's the level of your blood pressure. It will be manifested in your mouth. Your tongue and the oral will be able to If you have vitamin deficiency, it will be manifested in your mouth. You may have the ego because you lack vitamin C. If you have jaundice, apart from it appearing on your eyes, it can also appear on your tongue. If you have your, your uh, oxygen, the oxygen level in your blood, it's very obvious with the high half cyanosis that your tongue may change color to blue. So it also indicates to us what's happening in the body. The body. And this same mouth too can also be a cause of uh, infection traveling to the body. I think it's so, okay. Yes, so when, let's say you have periodontal disease and there are lots of bacteria in your mouth that, uh, and then some blood vessels in your gum, your gum that's pocketing it opens up there, uh, bacteria sits into your blood vessels through your gum. It gets into your heart and gives you endocarditis. So that's why we say that the mouth is linked to the body. People who usually have diabetes, it manifests in their mouth and they're also prone to gum diseases. So there's an interrelationship between the general body and the mouth. So you cannot separate oral health from the general body really care about your general well-being or your general health, then the first and most important thing you also have to care about is your mouth. So that's it. Okay, so that, that means that um, the teeth is for the mouth as a whole because the mouth contains the teeth and the tongue and the gum, the jaw. So it means that that is what is holding the body to function properly. Whether a sickness will come through it's all passed through the mouth. Most of them, some can yes. pass through the ears and all, but most, most of, of them is through the mouth because what we eat, most of the diseases we have, yes. is what we eat. And infection. It's just a yeah. few that maybe you can get it from the skin yeah. or maybe yeah. something entering your body. But most, it's from what we eat. Yeah. So the mouth, the mouth, you cannot underestimate the mouth. 
And then your movements, your smiling, it's from the facial muscles. If you get angry, you want to express your anger, it's from the facial muscles. If you are chewing, it's the muscles and the jaw that comes together. So you everything, almost everything we do, we need the, the artificial complex or the artificial system. And we need a mouth. So why is it so important for us to pay much attention to our health? Yeah. Because like I said previously, if you have very good oral health, you'll be able to prevent a lot of uh, diseases, systemic diseases. It, it, it's, it, it helps you to prevent a lot of uh, systemic diseases. And you also need it to be confident. You need it to be able to interact. So, in short, oral health, oral health will be able to help you fulfill the definition of the World Health Organization concerning health. That it's not only the absence of a of a disease in your body, but you need other things, and it's oral health that will contribute to all these things that you need. So my last question is, why is this so, um, it is so common in general, like a general something that most people really don't pay attention to their teeth. Like they feel like, okay, it's just like a normal thing. When they feel pain, they can instead of them to visit the clinic or the hospital, they feel like, oh, they can, you know, get some medication from the pharmacy and just treat it. But you can realize that most most people that visit the clinic have been, you know, enduring some kind of pain or a particular problem for a long time before finally deciding to, you know, visit the clinic. Why is it that most people don't really pay much attention when it comes to our health? Okay, so there are a few things that are on sale and the research has been no shown or proved it. First of all, it's lack of knowledge. Okay, people are not aware that. They, they are not aware of the importance of oral health. They don't know that they know that they use the attitude. They don't know it, it has other functions. Okay. They don't know. Uh, they don't have enough information. They have no knowledge of the oral diseases. So when it starts manifesting, unless it causes severe pain, they wouldn't bother. Okay, that is why. And they also be living with this. Yes, or fear, or is there a real attack? Can you really put my hands on it? Like dental services are very expensive. So, they always are afraid and shy away from um, assessing oral health. Because, for a fact, dental care is expensive. You cannot deny that fact. Dental care is expensive. So, I think these are the reasons. It's lack of knowledge. Is fear. Fear in two ways. Fear of the cost and fear of, you know, in the olden days, they were practicing this crude method of dentistry. So it has been handed down from generation to generation. People always think that everything that happens in the uh, dental clinic is painful. We only generate pain or we only create pain. So that fear. If you are going to the dentist, they are going to extract it. Yes, they extract it. They will use this, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> people actually has, even though know, some yeah. are just like, like a joke that has been there for a long time, people actually still believe that we the dentists or we the dental professionals, we still use all those things. Now some people have never stepped in the dental yeah. clinic, but they don't even know that you can just walk into a dental clinic, get yourself an exam to check whether your teeth or your mouth is so actually okay. very they think that it's only a matter of coming extraction. You have when you're in pain, you can't use hammer <laughs> and chisel to extract it. It's very painful. You bleed, your head gets swollen, yeah. and all that. So yeah. I think it's basically the fear, the fear, the cost involved, and then the lack of knowledge about uh, oral diseases, and then the functions of the dental practitioners. What we do. They don't have idea yeah, of that. Yeah. You don't know that we do examination. You know we counsel you not only on our health, but we also counsel you on the 
with general health. We don't know that we do preventive services. We don't know that we do cosmetic services. All they know is that the dentist or the dental practitioner is charged to and is paid for that. I said that we monitor them. Yes. We monitor them with their vital signs yes. and they get, you know, whether they're in good shape or not. But so, they so, yes. So they always feel like uh, a doctor is a, a dentist or a dental partner is just there for pain. So when they treat their pain and they are not able to handle it anymore, then they rush here, they get a solution and they are gone. They, are gone. they don't know that there are other and beautiful things yes. or services that we render. So that is why Hashem is here. We are an oral health center. We disseminate oral health information, we educate them, but we sensitize them with, about oral hygiene, oral health, what we do, what is into dentistry, if we go to a dental clinic, says, what is done there is not only extraction, no, we don't cause pain, extraction is an We have ways of managing pain, we just don't inflict, we don't use hammer. And <laughs> it's that like we're trying to uh, uh, bring the society closer to us. We, we, we want to take away the barriers that have prevented them from being friends with the dental uh, 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 profession or being friends with dentists or dental therapists or oral health offices. We want to break the barriers of cost. So we try as much as possible to uh, manage the cost dentistry so that almost everybody, everybody. whether your no, no matter your, your, background, your background or your class you'll be able to afford it. We try as much as possible to be calm, nice, friendly, warm to the people who work in no matter your race, no matter how you do, no matter what, so that you, you, you feel you, comfortable. That, that fear will go yes. away. So I can also recommend that oh no to the dental clinic or I went to the dentist and then I was so scared I thought she was going to do this but oh, she was so warm the staff were so kind they treated yeah. me so nicely they keep checking up on me so that to disabuse their minds about the fear of Any going to the dental they have clinic issues, they can just walk yes. so that is the main three things that we are trying to the barriers that we are trying to Break those three barriers to oral uh, uh, patronizing dental things or paying attention to their oral. We want to break. We want to uh, bridge the gap of uh, knowledge or information. We want to break the gap of cost. And I want to break that gap of fear. So that is why. Okay. Um, thank you so much, uh, Mrs. Lola. Um, can you give us some final advice to maybe potential patients out there or to everybody in the public who are watching us about um, your final advice about oral health? Yes. So like I said, the oral health is very important. It has a relationship and an influence on your general health. Okay. If you have very good oral health, trust me, you're going to have good general health. So I want to advise everybody to attention to the oral health just as you pay attention to your eye mm. you pay attention when you have malaria you go to the hospital when you have headache quickly seek to see the doctor pay attention to your mouth too there are most dental diseases it's the end state that you start having pain you wouldn't know that it's happening before you know it it's at the end stage so make it a habit to just walk into the dental clinic and say i'm coming to check my teeth Want to see just like go to the lab to do lab investigation or at the beginning of the year or end of the year, go to the hospital to have a, to go and have a general checkup or a medical checkup. Also working for a dental checkup. It doesn't take much time. It doesn't cost much. So you just walk in, let them examine you, ask questions, uh, the information you need about your oral health, ask us, do it. So we are inviting everybody. Pay attention to their oral health, and they should do that with Hashem. We are here, we, we are warm, we are sweet. We will take away that fear and anxiety that's in you. We 
we may give talk nonsense, so we yes. are encouraging all well, that's one. Yes. And so they said that they all come in and then come and check their our home status. Because if what you do not know, you cannot uh, 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 treat. You should know what you are having. You may be walking around, you have very bad life now, you have very bad oral you may not know. Mm -hmm. Because you some of the diseases, you've never seen it before because you don't have information. So when you come here, that will show you pictures of things that are oral disease. Then you say, hey, listen, it's my powerful. Sometimes you go and do oral health education and say, so, wow, this thing, I've been seeing it in my mouth. I didn't know it was a problem. So I didn't know this is the side effect. I didn't know the complication that comes with this. So come, get checked, know your status. Then you know what to do about it. Thank you so much for coming and uh, we hope to have you same time next week. Okay, so viewers, that was a very massive information from our managing director. She's also the practitioner in charge at Hashem Dental. With Hashem Dental, we always make sure that our, the well-being and the safety of our patient is our biggest priority. So I want to encourage everybody watching us out there if you are looking for the best dental clinic in ghana and even across the world there's no place than hashem dental so coming up next week we are going to talk about the topic oral hygiene practices and you are going to learn a lot you are going to know the type of toothbrush you are supposed to use how to brush your teeth how to keep your mouth in check how to prevent mad odor, everything that you have to you know, you know do to keep your mad safe or your fan safe or your teeth safe, you are going to learn it right here on your oral health with Hashem Dental. So, so I see you same time next week. Don't forget that this is your oral health with Hashem Dental.